friends welcome back to my channel welcome if you are new my name is Antonisha and this is Deep Rooted Disciples on this channel we focus on building women into biblically literate deep rooted disciples and we do that by digging deep into God's word by firmly planting our roots in Christ and by building our lives on him and following him if that is something that you are interested in please subscribe to the channel if you have not already and make sure that you share this channel this video and this ministry with anyone else that you think may benefit from it I am trying to share the gospel as much as possible and I would love your help on that journey. So please share this channel and this ministry with anyone else that you think may benefit from it as well. So as you can see from the title today, we're going to be talking about childlike faith versus childlike effort. And um, I've told you guys before, I am taking a systematic theology course and I am going to start making some videos about that. I know a lot of you guys did say yes, you wanted um, to hear more about that. It is extremely extremely challenging um and is really stretching me to the limits and i really i really enjoy that um and i'll talk about it more i'll make a video uh probably in january as i've gone through a bit more of the course but um long story short it is um a course that's created by a pastor who went through seminary and um he and his co-teacher they both went to the same seminary and he they basically decided that they wanted to create a course for the average lay person who probably would not be able to or just would not go to seminary for financial reasons, for time, for whatever reasons. Um, and they wanted to make that information accessible to them. And so it is like six different courses. Each course has like 10 lessons. And it takes me like I can get through like one lesson a week. It's it's like that intense. And um, it's all digital. Um, I was talking to one of my, uh, the associate pastor at my church about systematic theology. Um, and he kind of nerds out about systematic theology the same way that I do. And he was giving me some recommendations for a course. Um, and he was like, hey, if you're going to take it, um, I have a discipleship budget and I will purchase it. Um, and then that way we can have it available for, for the church members to use as well. And so that was an amazing blessing from God because I've talked to you guys before. Um, I really, really, if I have the opportunity, would like to go back to school and finish um, and get my bachelor's in biblical studies and then possibly go to seminary as well. Um, I have no aspirations to be a pastor. I do not believe in women being pastors um, and having authority over men. So that would not be my goal. It would be more to um, educate myself. And in this sense, I'm, I'm able to do that in a sense. Granted, yes, this is not a full seminary course, but um, these are some of the primary things I wanted to study in seminary and focus on. And so I'm able to do that um, as a blessing from my church and from my pastor free of charge. And so I definitely want to share what I'm learning on this channel. So maybe I'll start like a Theology Thursday series or something um, and start digging into that in the new year. But while I was working on one of the courses yesterday, I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday, <clears throat> they were talking about childlike faith versus childlike effort. And so it was like, and as I was wrestling with some of the ideas and I was just kind of writing my own notes that came to mind, that's why it takes me so long because I'm watching these videos and I have readings in a textbook and then like I'll pause the video and then I'll go down a rabbit hole of researching things and I'm like coming up with all these ideas. And so that's another reason why I do want to make these videos um, on systematic theology because I do want to be able to have conversations with people and kind of wrestle through these ideas um, with other people. But <clears throat> anyways, so... They were talking about childlike faith, and so I'm going to be reading from um, Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 6, and I will put it up on the screen because it's a good little chunk um, so that you guys can see it while I'm reading it. So Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 6 reads, At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. And that is in the English Standard Version, which is my preferred translation. And so that is the passage that there's a couple different passages um, in the Bible that talk about um, the faith of a child and childlike faith. But we talk about that all the time um, of having this, this pure and this innocent and this believing childlike faith <clears throat> and having childlike faith, um, especially in this particular passage, it requires you to humble yourself because as adults, we 
come and we have experiences and we have knowledge that we already have and we have all of these different biases and those things can and do inform our faith they do and we it's not to say that we have to just completely wipe our mind clean and forget everything that we've ever known everything that we've ever experienced or gone through anything like that but you just have to keep in mind that you do hold these biases and um that's kind of what we were talking about yesterday is about different types of theology and where your theology comes from, whether it's um, you grew up in the church and it's something that was passed down through the generations, whether it's just like what we call tabloid theology, where it's just like, it's just the newest and biggest thing and you're seeing it in, in on social media or in the news or whatever, anything that has to do with your faith and you're accepting that. So how are, what are you using to inform your theology is kind of what we were talking about. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so, like I said, having a childlike faith, you have to humble yourself and you have to um, you have to put aside your own will because you have to understand that everything is according to God's will and it's not according to your own. Um, and it's just this way, our opinions and our misconceptions that we've brought into our faith um, or that we've grown up with, if it's been like what we call folk theology that's been passed down through the generations because your grandma told you this and your grandpa told you this and your mom told you this or whatever else, those opinions and those misconceptions, they do not get in the way of us trusting Christ wholeheartedly. And so for me, I have, I have this video idea that I've had for a while and I need to flush it out and pray about it. But sometimes I feel like, sometimes I feel blessed that I didn't grow up in the church. Um, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. And sometimes I feel blessed because, um, and just the way that my nature is, I'm a very open-minded person and I'm not open-minded to where I let every single thing in and I accept it as truth, but I'm open-minded that I'm willing to um, let everything come to me, but I'm gonna fact check it. And so that's just how I've always been my entire life. But I don't have these kind of folk theologies that have been passed down to me. And as we were talking about that in the course, or as they were talking about it, and I'm watching in the video, there are a lot of those folk theologies that I did have in my mind that I believed to have a solid basis or a biblical basis, and they didn't. Um, and it is things that I just picked up through media, through movies and different things like that. But we'll, we'll talk about that in another video um, as I talk about systematic theology and start working on a whole new video series on that. But anyways, like you have to, so you have to keep those things in mind and know that you have those biases and know that um, they may not have an actual solid basis. Um, and you have to be able to set that aside to trust Christ wholeheartedly and to accept what scripture is telling us is true as opposed to what you may think was true because it was handed down or because you saw it this place or whatever else. And something that they brought up <clears throat> that really hit home to me. Um, and it's not anything new, but it just really made me think through it. Um, the And I'm going to read it so I don't misquote it. And one of the teachers was saying that he said, we are finite people trying to understand an infinite God. It says, while our faith may be childlike, our efforts to understanding God's word and in turn understanding him should not be minimal. So again, our faith should be childlike but our effort to understanding God and understanding God's word should not be childlike. We should not look at it and say, oh, that's a big word. I don't understand it. I'm not going to try to understand it. No, you should put forth every bit of effort that you can to understand God's word and in turn understand and know who he is so that you can draw closer to him. And that's kind of where the title of this video, Childlike Faith versus Childlike Effort, where that comes from. Because there are people who say that I should have childlike faith and so I shouldn't question anything. I should just accept anything that looks spiritual and accept it as truth. And that is having, that's childlike effort because you are not putting forth the effort to try to understand, is this really true? Is this based in scripture or is this just something that I'm allowing someone else or some media or something to tell me is true about my faith and then I'm accepting it and then I'm wrapping it up in my theology and I'm building the basis of my thoughts and of God's word and of my relationship with God and what how I'm supposed to live as a Christian. I'm basing all of that off of all of these things that I've just allowed in and I haven't asked any questions of it to see if it's actually true. And um, something that I um, remember picking up there, like, it's not going to be easy and it's okay to wrestle and struggle and have questions. And that that's another video that I've been working on. Um, I watched someone's video where she was talking about why she questions things when she's reading the Bible. 
and um she and she made it very clear and it's the same standpoint that i have it's not questioning as in the bible is not inerrant the bible is wrong or anything like that but just questioning and wrestling with it in order to understand it and by asking these questions it forces her to dig deeper and to try to understand and a lot of times these questions are because she's challenging what the bible is saying versus what someone else or church or her parents or whoever has told her growing up and she's asking questions trying to reconcile these things knowing that the bible is the final authority but then trying to figure out well where did all this come from so i really really love that and um, i have my own thoughts on that as well and so again i've, I've got a million and one ideas and Every time I get an idea for a video or something, I'm always submitting it to God. I'm always praying about it and saying, God, is this something that you think that I should speak on? Am I, I always ask, am I equipped to speak on it? Um, and I'm asking that of God, of course, because God is the one who's equipping me to do this. And so like I, said, I have a lot of video ideas. And so when I throw out, I'm like, oh, I, I, I have an idea about that. Um, just know that it's something that may possibly be in the works. I'm praying about it. And if I feel like God gives me the okay, then that video will come out. If not, then I'll shelve it and we'll see what happens with it. But um, yeah, so they were talking about it's okay to struggle and to wrestle with ideas and question things because there are some people who, again, they think that if it looks spiritual, I shouldn't question it because that means that I don't have faith and I don't believe and um, I'm questioning God's word. But it's just like, are you questioning what you're reading in scripture? Because you're questioning what someone else is telling you and it's just like what someone else is telling you may not be what's in scripture. So don't think that if you see this on TV or you see this in a movie, you see that this is how Satan looks. And, you know, we always in one of the examples I was talking about, you know, in like cartoons or animated films, you see um, the devil looking like this little red guy with a pointy tail and a pitchfork. And it's like, is that really what the devil looks like? Um, you see anytime you see anything with heavens, you see clouds and harps and who, you know, where in scripture does it say that that's what heaven looks like? And so um, being okay with, like I said, wrestling with and questioning different things um, and going back to scripture like the Bereans and checking to see if this is accurate. Um, and the one thing that really, um, I guess, inspired this video was this. It was just this one statement and I'm going to read it because um, I wrote it exactly as they said it and I don't want to mess it up. He said, it's okay that when we share our faith, we talk about a God we can't fully describe. Because we can't. God is so big and so infinite. Like we cannot. No, no words that we use to describe God can fully convey who he is. Now we can, we can, we can um, confidently say certain things about God and certain attributes and, and qualities of God because it's in his word but even those those words are just not enough they're not enough to fully describe who God is but I feel like and when I saw that when I heard this statement um the first thing that popped in my mind I was like wow I something that I realized that as, as Christians as believers we focus so much on trying to fully articulate our faith to others, especially when we're talking to a non-believer, we try to to fully articulate our faith and try to explain it all. Um, and it's, it's not possible. It's really not possible at all. But I, I've noticed that. I've, I've even noticed that about myself, that <clears throat> as I'm talking to people who have maybe come across my channel, or as I'm just talking to someone out in public and they are not a believer, and I'm trying to, you know, I've had people ask me, you know, what do you believe? Or why did you choose to be a Christian or something like that? And we try to fully articulate our faith in who God is and what God has done or what God has promised. And like I said, it's just our words just can't do God justice. It, it can't. But the thing that stood out to me is that a lot of times I've seen this um, on social media. I've seen this in, in YouTube videos. I've seen this in the media. Just And I'm pretty sure you all of you guys have seen some of this in some way, shape or form. What ends up happening is um, someone ends up either misquoting scripture or they misuse scripture because they're trying to they're trying to bring God down to a level that someone can understand so that they can fully articulate who God is. And like I said, as a believer, we cannot fully understand who God is. 
And I feel like, I personally feel like that would be even more so for a non-believer. So if we were, tried, we were to try to pull God down to a level for a non-believer to understand, I feel like it would do him a serious disservice and it's, it, it could be very detrimental. Because like I said, you see people uh, either misquoting scripture or misusing scripture or um, taking, you see people taking verses out of context all the time to try to describe God or try to talk about God. And what ends up, or sometimes the one I just, I just look down, sometimes you have people adding in things that are not in scripture. That's again, where a lot of those folk traditions and that um, folk theology comes from. Or like I said, you have people adding in things, and this is not new because even in um, even in biblical times, you had them doing that where they would try to like in um, like first century, they would try to take the scriptures and they would try to appeal to the pagan religions and make it and almost try to compare God to the pagan gods that these pagan religions worship because that was a way to kind of bridge the gap and get these pagan religions to embrace Christianity and to try to understand Christianity is they try to put it in terms that these people who um, had a different religion would understand. And of course, what that ended up doing is that ended up diluting God's word because you're trying to um, mix it in with something and we see it today you you try to you get people trying to mix in biblical themes or scripture into maybe new age or some of this like when you hear christians talking about manifesting in that name it and claim it and that is not biblical that is new age and when you try to mix scripture into someone else's belief system in order to try to get them to accept Christianity, you end up diluting Christianity. But again, you that happens a lot. And so for me, um, it was like a very, it was very much an eye opener because again, here on this channel, I am trying to help women uh, understand God's word and have a passion and a desire to study God's word. And sometimes and a big part of that, especially like if I'm doing a Bible study with me video, I'm taking a whole chapter or multiple chapters of scripture and I am, I'm deep diving and I'm studying it, but I'm trying to distill it down to give a summary and to give a, um, a way that you can apply this to your life. And I have to be very, very careful that I am not taking what I see in society and in culture and taking those terms and those um, those thoughts and those ideas and incorporating it into this message that I'm presenting to you because I want more people who are worldly to understand this biblical concept. I have to be very careful not to do that. And we all as Christians have to be very careful not to do that. Um, and a big part of that, again, is accepting that you cannot, you cannot fully describe God. We cannot fully understand God. So how do you fully describe something that you can't fully understand or someone that you can't fully understand? If I am in a group of people and someone says, hey, can you describe that woman right there? I don't, if I don't know her, I can't fully describe her to, to the rest of the people here. I can't, and I'm not going to attempt to, but yet people do that with God all the time. And you, even those who are seasoned Christians, you are still not going to fully, fully understand who God is because he's too big. He's too big for us to fully understand. We can understand him. We can know him. We can have a relationship with him based on what is in scripture and um, what he has said about himself to us in his word. But trying to go beyond that, like I said, you start adding in your own things. But any, anyway, so that was just something that really um, stood out to me. And then I was... I was um, Kind of with that in mind, I was thinking about the definition of faith. And so I started going, and like I said, this is why it takes me so long to get through one of these theology courses, because it's like, or one of these lessons, it's like the videos are like an hour, hour and a half long. And then I've got reading in two different textbooks. And then like, I'm going down rabbit holes and stuff and pausing the video. So like, yes, I think it's yesterday or day before yesterday, I was sitting 
probably for five or six hours just working on one lesson um, because I just kept branching off into these rabbit holes and researching things. And so I was like, let me, um, and I tell you guys all the time about using a Bible dictionary when you're reading scripture, because you think you know the definition of a word, but then when you actually look it up, especially in a Bible dictionary and not just a regular like Webster's dictionary, it may surprise you the meaning of that word or um, things that you see in the definition that you maybe did not think about. And so faith is one of them. So I was like, okay, what is the definition of faith? And so it says the definition of faith is the assurance that what is revealed and promised in the word is true, even though it may be unseen and a firm belief and conviction that it will come to pass. So again, even though it's unseen. So when you are trying to articulate your faith and you are trying to, um, break everything down to its fair to like its smallest essence so that you can explain it to someone else that's not true faith because there are things in scripture that there, things that are unseen things that are not quite unknown or you don't know rather it's not that it's unknown because god knows but it's unknown to us how this thing would happen or why this thing is happening we don't know but god knows and god said that it is so and that is us having faith that even though this thing is unseen we have assurance, we have blessed assurance that this thing is true and that whatever God says he's going to do, it will come to pass. Whatever God says, it shall be. Like that is faith. And so it made me think about trying to get others to see. And um, I made a video, I'm sitting here batch filming. So I literally just filmed that video where I was talking about um, asking you shall receive. And I was just talking about how I kind of had this um, kind of spiritual breakdown and I was praying to God about um, what I feel is like I, I didn't want to be amassing so much head knowledge and facts about scripture and about God and about who he is and it not lead to a heart transformation that I then used my hands and my feet and my mouth to do something about the transformation that was happening. And so it made me think and I was talking about when I make these videos for you guys, I don't want you to hear the facts that are rolling around in my head. I want you to hear my heart and I want you to know that the things that I'm learning and the things that I'm studying, they are producing a heart transformation and I want to be able to outwardly express that heart transformation. And so I kind of wrapped up my notes and I was like, stop trying to get others to see with head knowledge. So if I'm trying to explain something whether it's to a non-believer or to a believer like on this video a lot of you that watch these videos you are believers and so if i'm trying to get you to understand something that i've just studied in scripture i don't want to get you to see it based on the facts that i'm rattling off to you i want you to believe what i'm saying and have faith in what i'm saying and have faith in what the scriptures are saying have faith in what the scriptures are saying and first of all, I want you to fact check what I'm saying to make sure you're not just accepting it because I said it, but you fact check it in scripture, but have faith and believe in what the scriptures are saying. And um, I want to get you guys to see because you can see God working in and through me. And again, you can hear my heart. And that is the big thing. And it's um, it's a big focus for me because I've said before, I'm a very logical, analytical person. I'm all about the facts and the numbers in the give me the facts. That's how I've always been my whole life. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it's just like, I have to be very careful, because my natural inclination is to acquire knowledge for the sake of acquiring knowledge. And so I have to constantly be in prayer and uh, asking God to help me not just acquire this knowledge um, of scripture and memorizing scripture and knowing who God is and knowing these attributes of God, not to just have that knowledge in my head, but to also have that heart transformation and to draw closer to him. We have a visitor. Hi, friend. Mommy. Good morning. Mommy. You say hi? Hi. Okay. What do you need, baby? What do you want to picture? Okay. Sit right there and then I'll help you with your picture. So that is, like I said, that's a big, um, it's not a struggle for me. It's just a focus and that I have to constantly pray that, um, all of this knowledge that I'm acquiring, that um, there is a heart transformation happening and that within that heart transformation, I'm able to outwardly express that heart transformation. And like I said, that means I'm using my hands and I'm using my feet. And in this case, I'm using my mouth and being a mouthpiece for God in 
um, doing something about what I'm learning, how it's changing me, and then I'm doing something with it. And so that's kind of where I want to leave this off. And like I said, talking about that childlike effort, um, even though we are called to have childlike faith that is pure and that is not tarnished by our beliefs and our misconceptions and all of that, that does not mean we put in childlike effort to understand God's word. You put in full effort. You constantly stay in prayer, asking God to help you. <laughs> you constantly pray and ask God to help you understand his word um, and be transformed by his word and asking him, what do you now go and do with that? So if you guys have any questions, any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you have not already and share this video with someone who you think it may benefit. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. You say bye? Bye.